I, I know there's a lot of things you can't talk about because yeah. you're in a quiet period yes. right now. So we'll, we'll stay away from many of those issues. But first of all, I'd like to just ask you what you think about as a government contractor, if that's showing up, if it's an issue, if you really think this is something that's hitting people hard right now. You know, it's not hitting us as much, but it is hitting some of our customers. And, and to me, that's probably the worst. You don't know in the middle income and the lower income how it's affecting us. Yeah. And we have a large contract with TRICARE. Right. And the, our military members are starting to be impacted by it. So, so it's less about us. It's really more about, about our customers. Yeah. I, I, again, <clears throat> day, day 33, 34 that we're heading into here. And it's been a month since these, some of these people have been paid. So we'd all like to see yeah, a resolution. I, I agree. Um, let's talk a little bit about the industry overall. There has been a lot of consolidation yes. in the industry. If you look at uh, CVS Health and Aetna getting together and then Cigna and Express Scripts getting together, uh, Cigna's got a $73 billion market cap now. CVS Health is $85 billion. Does this make you feel any sort of pressure that you need to change and evolve yeah. uh, to get bigger with those companies? or do You, you know, we're, we, we constantly wrestle with that question. I, I think in general we're seeing this industry slowly move to an industry that the business model is going from a utilization maximization mm -hmm. to, to payments around value and, and cost. And when that change is creating some significant changes in the industry. Technology is, is enabling it to happen. Mm -hmm. Payment models like Medicare Advantage are making it happen. In addition, consumer expectations. For us as an organization, I think the best thing for us is stay focused on what we do. And today we are really good, and we've been doing this for quite some time, on taking care of complex chronic patients. And that shows up in Medicaid and Medicare. And that's a different business than just having scale and being in multiple different markets. What does that mean? What do you do specifically? You know, we do a few things. First, we take full risk for these complicated patients. So we, we are responsible for their health for seven to ten years. Um, what that requires us to do is really not only work about their health care, but about their lifestyle. And, and we focus in five areas that's really important, partnering and owning. I mean, you've probably seen some acquisitions we've done around primary care, mm -hmm. around home, pharmacy, around social determinants and behavioral. And what we do is we integrate that with our insurance product. And what we try to do is to find ways that we keep people out of hospitals, nursing homes, and keep them safe at home, and at the same time, keep them healthy. I, I mean, oh, go no, I just, there's a poll out, uh, a Kaiser Family Foundation poll. 56% now of the public support a single payer uh, Medicare for all option. Yep. What would that do to you? And, and when do you think something like that is, is it actually, po I'm, you know, the millennials will eventually take over everything we're doing now. I, I hate to admit it, but that, I guess that's happened before. Andrew, it happens in the past. It's, it's like the changing of the guard. Yeah. Is that coming? I don't know if it's coming, but let me ask 56%, you. 56%, why wouldn't it come? Well, there's a lot, a lot of stuff that has to happen, including a budget to, to, to no support. No kidding. It. Yeah. Right. Uh, let, me, let me come back to your question about what does it mean for us. There's three parts within the healthcare system when we talk about uh, Medicare for All. One is around the financing. The second is around the coordination. And the third is around the provisional of care, the provider side. What we see is Medicare for All is really talking about the financing arm. Is it the employer? Is it the exchanges? Is it Medicare? And that's really where a lot of the conversation comes from. They're still going to need individuals to and companies to coordinate care. And they're going to still need uh, organizations to provide care. I never see the government getting into the provider and the coordination of care. Very similar to our space um, very similar to other contracting agencies where you see that the private industry partnering with the government makes a really good partnership, but they are always in the financing and the controlling Would of the dollars. Would rich people just have private insurance still? So that could happen. That could. And the that whole, could. but the, the, the quality of care for everybody else, they'll have it, but they'll have no access to it, isn't it? I mean, don't we know how supply and demand works? Haven't it does, but, work? but we see this in Medicare Advantage where the rewards are not only around the access. It's around the quality. So take our company, for example. Today, 84% of our members are in four-star plans or greater. And what that's telling is the quality, and the quality is measured by HEDA scores and other, other measurements like that. Real quick, because uh, we always talk about Canada. You think that system is better or worse than where we are? I think our system is good. I really do. I think our system has a lot of great things to it around innovation, around access, around recruiting the best providers in, in care, and at the same time, coordinating the care across the system.